the ability to mod a Daisy private server has now been out for a few weeks, and uh, well, at least the ability to access the XML files and change the values in there. Uh, this has allowed us to uh, up the way loot spawns, uh, increase heli crashes, increase car spawns, um, swap bear and chicken spawns. I've made a few videos on how to do those subjects. But um, in the comments, it's often asked, uh, how do you change player loadouts? That is, of course, instead of spawning in as a fresh spawn with a, uh, a, a glow stick and a rag, people want to be able to spawn in with guns and, and, and different clothes. But uh, it's simply not possible through the XML files that we've been given access to. Uh, if you have a PC server, you'll know that you need to access what's called the INIT.C file. Uh, but for some reason, console players um, don't have access to that file. That is until now. Today, when I was streaming on Twitch, um, I was uh, just doing some modding, editing the XML files, editing, adding in buildings and all that sort of stuff. When a young man called Phil entered the chat and he said, join our servers, we know how to change player loadouts. At first I thought, well, this is, uh, this is just you know, a troll. It's not, it's not true. So I said, yeah, message me the server details. He messaged me the server details. I did this all live on Twitch. You can go back and watch it. And uh, I joined the server and sure enough, I didn't start with the regular jeans and jumper. I had a different tracksuit and a knife. Spawned in again as another character with different items. And I got talking to these guys offline and uh, I said, would you be willing to give me this information and um, we can share with the world? So the gentleman gave me the information on how to access the INIT.C file for console players. And it is at this point that I need to give full credit for everything I'm about to do to access the INIT.C file to fill Tuna Terps, King Billy, and Syntax. Now, they all have Mixer and Twitch. Uh, uh, some have Twitter and YouTube channels there. I'm going to put all their links uh, to everything that they're uh, uh, social media-wise. They know what they're doing when it comes to modding. Um, I, I, I know how to edit XML files and make things appear and this sort of stuff. What these guys have shown me is just uh, unbelievable. So uh, they all are part of the Kings of Daisy 2.0 server. They have a Discord, which I'll put in the description. Um, but please, please go and check out uh, everything that Phil, Tudor Terps, King Billy, and Syntax have to offer because they're going to give you the, the best uh, Daisy modded experience on console that you're going to get. So thank you guys. And uh, everything that you're about to learn about accessing the INIT.C file to customize player loadouts is all from these guys. So thank you very much. Now, before we actually go on and say how to access the file, I uh, must give a massive warning. Uh, doing this, uh, if you do this and you don't know what you're doing, you can wreck your server. Uh, you can make it stop. If you make an error when you edit the file, uh, it won't show up in the server list. Uh, if you thought XML was difficult to get your head around, what you're going to see is probably... Uh, uh, not going to be any easier. Uh, so I would only suggest attempting to edit the INIC file or um, even access it if you're comfortable and know exactly what you're doing. But having said that, let's have a look how to access it. Now, the first thing that you're going to need is a, an FTP program, a file transfer protoc protocol application. I use Cyberduck. Now what it is, uh, it lets you transfer files to your server instead of um, using the web interface, it allows you to connect to your server. Um, I'll put a link to Cyberduck in the description. That's what I use, it's, it's, it's quite simple. There's others out there, but I've been able to get the results and make this work using Cyberduck. If you go to your Nitrado web browser, you'll notice you've got FTP credentials. Now these are the credentials that you'll need to enter in uh, the Cyberduck or your FTP program to be able to um, uh, access the INIT, INI, what is it, INIT.C file, whatever it is. Um, so what you need to do is uh, you need to do a couple of things. First, you need to open a connection. You'll need to uh, copy out the host name, like so. Copy out the username. Paste, 
it has a password in there for my previous login. But now what you need to do is uh, normally you would copy the password and paste it in, hit connect. At this point, you hover over the password that's uh, hidden, click on it to change it, type in a new password up here, let's say new password. You can make this whatever you want. Copy that out. Hit, and as soon as you hit OK, go back into your Cyberduck or FTP program and copy that password straight in. So if I hit OK, go over to Cyberduck, paste and connect. Just confirm it. It will log you in. And you'll see your folder there, but if you expand it, for some reason, and I don't know why, but the guys at the Kings of Day Z 2.0 might be able to tell you, it gives you what is called root access to your server. So now if you go down to your MP missions folder and go to daisyoffline.chanaris plus, you'll see all your regular XML files, but you also see the init.c file. Now this is the file that is going to allow us to achieve a lot more. So let's have a look at the init.c file and see what we can do. Okay, so I've just uh, copied out or I've, uh, I've downloaded and um, opened up the init.c file into Notepad++. And if you look at it, it's, uh, yeah, it's in C, uh, programming language. It's similar to many others. But uh, this is where all the coding, this is, if you look at it, you might be able to sort of guess what some of the stuff do. This sort of, this sort of sets the weather. You scroll down. Um, you can sort of get the gist that it's creating the character here. Have a look further. You can see, oh, look, it's, it's making an, an array of the different uh, glow sticks. Chem light white, chem white light yellow, the green. So that determines what color glow stick you start with. When you go down there, it determines what kind of uh, fruit you start with. Um, now I'm not gonna show you exactly what you need to do because what you wanna do might be totally different, but I will show you a couple of things, uh, how, to, um, how to start spawned. So let's say that we want our character to start with a, uh, a simple gun and two mags. So let's have a look at a file I edited earlier. So that's all the same stuff here. Um, if you go down, I've commented out, so basically made this information not readable by the uh, game. I've commented out and I've placed the, the following lines here. Basically, uh, player.getInventory.createInventory. Basically, it tells the game to put these particular items uh, uh, in your player's inventory. So I've said for an FX, FNX 45 and two 15 round mags. So now if I um, save that and go back into uh, the Cyberduck FTP program and copy this file uh, from my directory and pay, paste it in a Cyberduck. It will uh, initiate the transfer. It'll prompt me to uh, overwrite, which I will. Upload complete. Now all I have to do is start my server and uh, let's have a look. Server's come back online. I'm logging back into the Don Silly Games mod test server. We've got a 15 second wait, but I'm not gonna cut this out because you know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that uh, this is bullshit and that uh, it's clickbait. And I'm just logging into a server that I've got weapons on before and uh, this isn't really happening. Nothing's true. This isn't a flamingo shirt. It's flamingos. So here we go. I've spawned in in my uh, custom location on my server. Go on my inventory. There's a gun. The two clips that we said for it to have in the INIT.c file. But you're not going to believe me until I kill myself, obviously. Now I will spawn back in the same spot here. 
because I've only set one spawn point. Hit respawn. We're back. Got the inventory. We've got the gun. We've got the two clips. Don't believe me? We'll do it again. Here he goes. Bye bye. Respawn. We're back. Got the gun. Got the two clips. It works. So as you can see from the file that we edited there, we just added in three lines of code. We took out some and added in three. We've got the FX and the two mags. Now you're probably thinking, with all that power, I just got a pistol and two mags. Well, let's have a look at another file that I got. Now I didn't write this file. I found it on, uh, I think it was Reddit or um, uh, just a forum that someone's made their own uh, custom deathmatch style spawnable characters. I think there's potentially like four or five different uh, players that you can spawn of different guns and weapons. So let's save this different file, load it up, start the server and see what this one's all about. Okay, so we've uploaded our init.c file through the uh, Cyberduck FTP program. We've uh, restarted our server, so let's look. So look at this, I've uh, been uh, spawned in with a uh, whole heap of stuff, guns and clips. And uh, of course, if we uh, end it all, and we respawn, the way that that file worked was that it um, had all the instructions and the code for the players to spawn in with um, a whole heap of weapons. This one in particular, look, we've got uh, VSD. Oh. For some reason we've got guts, batteries, and uh, ammo and guns. But uh, again, let's see what next character we can get. Respawn, get a new character. Look at this guy. What's he about? What's he got? He's got a beer, ammo, supplies. Kill ourselves again. And all the while I'm doing this, remember, this is this is on console. This is on console. Who we got here? Someone else? Yeah. Customized loadout for a fresh spawn. So there it is. Like I said, the uh, INIT.C file is quite powerful. Uh, not only can you control custom player loadouts, but you can control the weather and other stuff. But also, if you use uh, something called uh, Daisy Community Offline Mode, this is an offline tool that you can use if you have uh, Daisy on the PC. Basically, what it allows you to do is to uh, generate code and place objects and items within the world and it'll give you the corresponding coordinates. So I did that today and uh, was able to place the Riffy boat at Skelitsky Island on my modded server. And uh, when I place that into the INIT.C file, uh, it becomes more stable than the previous method of uh, creating an event for adding buildings. So if we have a look at the file here, you can see that uh, uh, it's made up of two parts. We have a function at the top that uh, spawns an object. And down below uh, within the uh, function, another function of the file, we have the spawn objects. So I've got the uh, five parts that make up the Riffy boat. Now this is the preferable way to add buildings to your server. Uh, of course, uh, on console, you don't uh, normally have access to this file until now. Uh, so we've had to add buildings and structures through events within the XML, but uh, not anymore. Don't do it because this is the more stable way. Let me show you why. So here's the boat that I added uh, from Riffy. Now, so I'm going to swim over it, over to it. I'll um, probably cut out all the boring stuff. 
So here we are, we made the swim over uh, to the riffy structure here that we've placed at Skalitsky Island. Um, now, if I uh, was to make this through an event and I was to log out, it takes the events uh, longer to load in. So people have found that if they log out uh, that on a second story building that they've put in through the XML, they'll load back in only to fall to the death. But if I exit the game, wait my 13 seconds. Now, if I go and log back in, waiting another 15 seconds. So here we are, we're back, we're loading in. And remember, I logged out on the Riffy boat. You can see the boat's right there. That's because the INIT.c file uh, is the first file to load and initialize the game. And uh, it's that file that grabs all the data from the XML. So uh, by the time your player's loaded in, the game's still loading the data from the XML. And that's why uh, you'll find that buildings don't, just, uh, don't appear straight away and that you'll fall through them. So this is the preferred method. And this in combination with the Daisy Community Offline Mode tool that you can use with your PC, it's, you know, this is the only way to mod. This is the only way to add buildings. This is the only way to do it. So there you go. That's how you can access the INIT.c file. And that's some, a small part of what you can achieve for console. Now, results may vary. We could experience lag. There could be crashes, all sorts of things. Just take your time and go easy. But of course, if you have no idea what you're doing, don't do it. You could potentially break something. Uh, yeah, so don't do it if you don't know what you're doing. I'll drop the links to some of those uh, uh, INIT.c files in the description so you can have a look and try and read them and understand them. Um, but please go and check out the Kings of Daisy 2.0 who were the people that uh, approached me and showed me the technique for gaining root access into your server. So thank you to Phil, Tuna Terps, King Billy, and Syntax. But please go check out their, their Twitters, their Twitches, their Xboxes, their YouTube channels. These guys know what they're doing with modding. Go check out their servers. Go join their Discord. Um, yeah, ch just check them out. They, 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 know what they might be able to help you. Just check them out. They're, they're going to be a, a really good asset for the uh, Daisy console community. Um, yeah, so make sure you go check those guys out. And big thank you to those guys too. I'll be uh, uploading uh, that customized uh, loadout uh, file to my um, PVP guarantee server, which you spawn on Skalitsky Island with gear. Um, so yeah, jump on and check it. And uh, thank you for watching and please be careful.